Hello and welcome. My name is Tyrion Lannister, and you know what time it is, folks. We've got a new update, so it's time to talk about that one. Alright, so this update wasn't too crazy. Basically, the main things that we get, we get the Awakening of Varys, Awakening of Marjorie, we get this new ranking board, and then there's some changes to the fiery crystal mines, some of the UI changes and stuff like that, but not too worried about that. Um, okay, so let's, I'm, I'm going to talk about the Awakenings separately, um, you know, I'll do a whole video on those, but let's talk about this ranking board and then the Fire Crystal Mines. So, where do you find this ranking board? They kind of gave us a description, but if you go down to more, hit rankings, then you get to this screen. Um, nothing new here though, because it's not in the local rankings. You've got to go to the world ranking. Now when you go here, you get the usual individual power, individual eliminations, alliance power, alliance eliminations, but now there's the alliance score rankings. Just to quickly go to it and talk about it. Um, you know, each alliance has a total score. The top 100 is anywhere between basically 9 million and 3 million. Um, you know, clearly there's a pretty big jump between ATD and the next best, and you'll notice that there really isn't any other jumps like that. Um, everyone else is pretty clustered together, so I'm not sure exactly what ATD did exactly to deserve uh, to, to get that bump, but um, definitely an interesting new metric. But I think that everyone can agree that this feels a little arbitrary. We want to know more. Well, if you go to the world ranking here, there's this exclamation point. And if you click on it, it tells you a little bit more about this. So it says alliances are ranked according to the total historical highest power score of all members in the alliance. During the matchmaking for all out war, the top 16 registered alliances will enter the super battlefield. The super battlefield is more brutal, but with better rewards. Okay, now what's interesting is that um, these numbers are already starting to change a little bit. Like MAD was at 6, like 6.8, 6.9 when I just like opened the new update like not super long ago. And it, we're already up to 7.2. I, you know, let me check and see if we just like added anyone. No, we haven't added anyone recently and our power hasn't changed that much so i'm not exactly sure why we got that bonus but definitely this is going to be a list that i would recommend continually like check like keep looking at it and seeing how it's changing and, and what's going on with it um but like i said so right now this is the list and it sounds like there's that whole new event that they're describing the all-out war um, and apparently the top 16 are going to be in a special battlefield of their own. I'll say that, you know, this score, it being based on the historical highest power score of all members in the Alliance, what that sounds to me like is that it's basically saying if you got to 3 billion power, but then you like felt like you were a troop whale and you wanted to trim your fat and you took down power, um, that it's going to count you as the max that you were ever at, like the highest historical power sounds like the max that you were ever at. But then I don't really get why these numbers are so low. Like clearly people, you know, alliances have a lot more than, than this amount of power. So I'm not really entirely sure what that means, but um, I think that must have something to do with it. And there's all, maybe like all members in the alliance. I wonder if like alliances that have been around for longer, like it's all members, like all historical members maybe. I don't know. That sounds kind of weird and I'd be very surprised if that's what they mean. But clearly there's some new metric and that's what this is going to be deciding, who's in the super battlefield. So looking at it right now, we've got ATD, PWS, TBE, MAD, ROA, RYS, you know, all usual suspects, HHH, this is the new KAC shell, so I guess that answers that, because this is the new shell, um, it does not seem like it's about historical strength, um, OBV, COP, N3O, HOH, but like, look at that, like, N3O, which is by far the most power, like, if you look at Alliance power, N3O, far and away most power, uh, but they're only, what, 11th here? Like, that's kind of odd, um, HON, uh, KIG, RUS, BDR, and FDH. But what's interesting is like FDH, like another one of the top ones, and they're ranked 16th here. 
but like Ash, a very historically strong alliance, like in terms of just been around forever. German Jokers too, like they've been around forever, not in this top 16. Um, HOH not being in the top 16 is wild to me. Like just looking again at alliance power, they're third. Like how are they not? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm really definitely hoping they'll give a little more explanation as to what exactly this number is based on. Oh, look at that. Just in, like, literally just now, we've jumped to fifth. We've gone from fourth to fifth, ROA past us. So clearly there's a lot of shuffling going on right now. Definitely keep watching this to see exactly how it all shakes out. But for now, I'm going to leave this. Let's talk a little bit about the Fiery Crystal Mines. So the Fiery Crystal Mines, the changes that were made, um, first and foremost, they kind of cleared some stuff up. They stated that this kind of, okay, it's always open Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Love that. Make it clear. Always good. Also, they've really trimmed down exactly who else is going to be in your cross-server mine. The local mine is still just your kingdom, but now the cross-server mine is going to only have eight other kingdoms instead of like four it was like 20 it was something kind of crazy so that should make it a little bit less competitive and make there be more available mine slots which was definitely needed like i was noticing they were filling up way too quickly and this is gonna be really nice but with that there's now a new goal if you can get twenty six thousand fiery crystal mines in a week then you get a new bonus i don't think anyone cares about the 15 minute speed ups but you get an extra weapon chest for getting this goal, which is pretty big. Um, so just for some context at what 26k fiery crystals would be, um, if we go over to the one that I'm on right now, um, I think it'll show that I've collected 5,000 so far, and I'm about halfway through of a 24-hour. So it's a little bit underestimating to say that a 24 hours on a blue crystal like a regular one gives you about 1000 but that's like probably about 1200 or so is or sorry 12000 um is usually what i've expected so basically in order to get this goal you're going to need to be on like at least two and a half days worth of a, of a regular crystal obviously less if it's a higher rank crystal like one of the uh, rich fiery mines probably gonna be a lot less but what is interesting about that is that in four days, that means you really got to be on the ball and you're really going to need to be on it for almost the whole time. Um, you can basically take off one day in that whole four day set that you're on a crystal mine. So definitely intrigued by this. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this quest plays out. And I'm excited that they've kind of limited the cross server a little bit so it's a little less competitive. But definitely some f interesting, fun changes, and just any way to get more weapons chests is definitely good because everyone needs them. Um, that's the new big you know, thing is the new weapon equipment. So I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you learned a thing or two about all the changes coming to Westeros right now in our newest uh, update. And until next time, my name is Cherian Lannister. I'll see you then.